What is up amigos? Today we're looking at the lift production of an airfoil. And if you haven't looked at our previous video where we went through the airfoil's nomenclature, check that out in this card here. So we'll be going through the lift curve, the stall, the maximum lift coefficient, and the CL alpha, something called CL alpha. We'll also be going through the effects of the camber and thickness on an airfoil's lift. So let's start off here. First with the lift curve. So let's say we have a regular Cartesian graph here. And on the x-axis, we have the angle attack alpha in degrees. And this is zero here. And here we have the lift coefficient. And let's say it goes to one. Now the regular airfoil, let's say any typical airfoil that we have, whether it's uh, symmetrical or cambered, a little bit thick, a little bit thin, whatever, it will generally have an air, a lift coefficient, lift curve slope, sorry, something like this. And I'll explain what these parts are in a second. So the first thing is that we have this, the linear part. So as we increase the angle of attack, so we pitch it more and more this way, so we rotate it more, so it's, instead of facing this way, it goes up and up and up, up. We get an increase in the lift coefficient and it's quite linear to begin with. We get to a point then where we get this sort of tapering off and then a drop off. This is the stall area. What happens is as we get to a certain angle of attack, it's the flow, the angle tag is quite steep, so the flow comes over and we start to separate over the airfoil and then we start to lose lift. Now notice that we don't lose all of the lift that the airfoil is producing, we only lose some of it and often it's like 20-50% around that range. And it can be very um, severe, like the drop can be very severe or it can be somewhat um, plateau, like it can sort of come down a little bit like this and then taper off. It really depends on the airfoil, which we'll get into in other videos, but in this case we'll just stick to these basics. So we know that as we get to a certain angle of attack, the flow will stall over the airfoil, it will look like this, and we'll lose some lift. And let's say this is an angle of attack of 10 degrees. So that's what the stall is and the lift curve slope is. What about the CL max? What is this? Well, you may have figured out that the CL max is the maximum lift coefficient of this entire graph. So if we were to look along this entire path, we can note that, okay, this is the point where we get the maximum lift coefficient and it might be 1.2 here. So we can say that the CL max equals 1.2. And this is quite important because now we understand what the maximum lift this airfoil can produce. That ties into how much weight we can then lift. Another important parameter is something called the CL alpha. So what is this? Well, the CL alpha is really just the slope of this, of this line here, the linear part. So the CL alpha, we can quote as being whatever we want, depending on this line here. And this is important because it also tells us how much we need to pitch the airfoil to produce enough lift to, for example, take off or to have steady flight or if we need to like elevate a little bit more or whatever, we can then pitch the airfoil to the angle tank that we need. It's quite easy to calculate. So that's the general construction of the lift curve slope, this uh, graph here. Let's talk about a couple principles, a couple of the um, characteristics of the airfoil and how that affects this lift curve slope. And as I mentioned, if you haven't watched that video on airfoil nomenclature, make sure to do that because now we're going to be going into these um, terms. The first one is camber. So let's say we have a cambered airfoil. It might look something funky like this. So you can see there is a bit of camber to it. It's like curved a little bit. How does curving this airfoil affect this um, lift curve slope here? Well, it's actually quite easy. So camber actually lit effectively elevates this line. So everything just really shifts up by a certain amount. So instead of being down here, we have, um, let's say for an angle attack of three degrees, we have a lift coefficient of 0 0.3. With camber, we might be at 0 0.6 now. So all this does is when we are at um, a certain angle attack, we are just producing more lift than we would if we had an uncambered airfoil. This also means that at zero degree angle attack, we are not producing zero lift. So if we have a symmetrical airfoil, when we have a zero degree angle attack, so it's completely flat with the oncoming flow, we will have no lift being produced. But with a cambered airfoil, that's not the case. Now I should also stress that this is for something called positively cambered airfoils. This is where it's flexed upwards. If the airfoil is flexed downwards, so this is very rare, it's, um, I guess you would say for motorsport, if it's like this kind of thing, so it can downwards, would actually be shifting the line down instead. So that's how camber affects the lift curve slope. What about thickness? So we can have different thicknesses of airfoils. Right here we have three different thicknesses. We have this one which is quite chunky, this one which is a little bit thinner, and this one which is very thin. How does that affect the lift curve slope? Well, the 
lift in general is proportional to how thick the airfoil is. And in a book by a guy called Hörner, which was a like a pioneer in a lot of aerodynamics, he gives a very good formula to calculate in general the seal alpha. And this is approximately 0.11 plus 0.09 T on C. So let's discuss these terms in this formula. So the first term is the seal alpha. This refers to this lift curve slope. So the greater the seal alpha is, the steeper this line is, and the more lift we're producing just by rotating the airfoil a little bit. This first term is 0.11, this is just a constant. Then we have 0.09 times T on C. T on C is a thickness to chord ratio, so how thick this airfoil is. So let's say we have a NACA, sorry, a NACA 0020. So from the last video, we know that the thickness to chord ratio is 0.2, 20%. So we can just sub this value in here, times it by 0.09, add it to 0.11, and we'll get a CL alpha. So from this equation, we can now tell quite easily a thicker airfoil, so an airfoil which has a thicker, a greater thickness to chord ratio, will produce more lift at a given angle of attack than an airfoil which is thinner. So that's the effect of the thickness on the CL alpha and the lift being produced by this airfoil. So let's quickly recap what we just went through here. We went through the lift curve slope and we have a regular graph, the Cartesian graph. On the x-axis, we have the angle of attack. On the y-axis, we have the lift coefficient. And then we have this slope and it consists really of three parts. We have the linear range where we, if we increase the angle of attack, the lift coefficient will increase linearly. Then we get to the point where the flow will start to separate a lot and we'll get this drop in lift. And then we get this final part, which is postal and the flow is just, you know, going over the airfoil and the airfoil is still producing a constant amount of lift regardless of really how much you pitch it. Now, we also have the CL max, which is the maximum lift quotient that this airfoil will produce in this given um, situation. So we just look at where the lift quotient is maximum and that is the CL max. And we can also uh, tell what angle attack this is at. So we have it at 10 degrees here. The CL alpha is the slope of this line, the initial linear part. The greater this number is, the steeper this line is, and the more lift we will produce by pitching the airfoil just a little bit. So in other words, like how sensitive the airfoil is in terms of lift production to the angle of attack, you can think of it that way. In terms of camber, camber is again how much the airfoil is sort of like flexed. And if we have camber, this then shifts this line up or down. It doesn't change the slope of it, it just changes how, where it occurs. So the seal alpha is still the same, it just pitches it, it just moves up or down. In terms of thickness, if we have a thicker airfoil, this changes than the CL alpha. So the line here, this linear part, gets thicker. Sorry, gets um, steeper with increasing thickness. And we have this really nice equation, which isn't perfect, but it is a good approximation uh, for determining how much lift an airfoil will produce and the CL alpha based on just the thickness to chord ratio. It's a very powerful equation considering how simple it is. So that's it in this video. If you liked it, make sure to like it. And if you want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe. And if you want to learn more about this, check out a book by John D. Anderson called Fundamentals of Aerodynamics. And also check out courses that we do in terms of theory and CFD on this. You can find them in the link in the description. And I'll see you next video. Peace out, amigos.